In part five of our athlete dashboard project, we're gonna begin working on the athlete trend report. This is a really powerful report to show the trend of a metric over time. Some of the features are the ability to select your start and end dates, as well as the ability to take any metric and show the two values between those dates, as well as the trend that happens between those dates. This is gonna be a really powerful tool and a great way to visualize your data. So let's get after it. Okay, so we're starting off with the dashboard the way we left it in the last video. And just as a quick reminder of how far we've come, what we've been able to create here is we have all of our KPI dashboard with the text logic headers along the right hand side here. And then in the last video, we created this athlete profile radar. And in this video, we're gonna tackle the trend report that sits right in this area here. The first thing that we wanna do in order to make that happen is we need to have a spot on our filter menu where we're gonna select our start and our end dates for this report. So the good thing is, is we've already done a lot of this work before, so I should be able to just select the date filter from any one of these KPI charts and just copy that, and I'm just gonna paste it twice underneath where the select athlete goes, and I'm just gonna give this the start date and end date label, and now I should be able to just select any date, and indeed I can because of the way that we've set everything up with our list tab. That was just an easy way to kind of make that happen, and it's a good lesson. If you set up your sheets properly with all the right references, you should be able to copy certain elements and use them again and again and again throughout your different um, either projects or in the same project over and over again because there are a lot of times that you will want to do the same calculations. Now, step two is going to be to create the actual athlete header bar. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just going to copy this one down here, control C, and right click to paste the actual format so that when I go and type the formula in here that we're gonna use, that it's going to have the white text on the dark blue font and everything's going to look the same across the whole sheet. So let's, let's put this formula together. And if you'll remember from the other header bars, we have to use the and symbol a lot and a lot of quotations. So what it's gonna look like is I'll go to the formula bar and I'm gonna type equals. And we want, the first thing is where we have our athlete name, which is in B3. Then I'm gonna use the and symbol quotation. And I want this to say KPI trend report. And I'm gonna put that in all caps. That's just a personal preference. And remember, Anything that is it within quotations gets printed out as text. So I'm gonna add one more space here at the end and a quotation. And then the next thing that I want to add is um, an quotation from, because I want to have the dates in there, double dots, space, quotation, and then an, we're gonna actually add our date now. So it's gonna look like this text, open that up. I'll close this down so we can see, but the date is stored in B4, and then a comma, I have to give it now the, for, the format, so quotation, Y, 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 dash, M, M, dash, D, D, because that's how I like to put my dates, quotation, and then bracket, and then now I want another and, because now we have to have the two date. So what I'll put is quotation, space, two, double dots, space, quotation. I know it's a lot of quotations. And then we'll put our last date in, so I'll type in. And then text, the from date is stored in B5. And then comma, and our and our format, so Y, 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 Y. M, M, D, D, quotation, comma, hit OK. And you can see now it gives us that words but it's just a little bit too big. So I'm just going to shrink the font down a little bit, maybe 18. That's still a little bit big. We'll go to 14. And then I'm just going to um, center this right in the middle. So now you see we have Dave KPA trend report from 2020-01-01 to 2020-01-15, okay? So that is just, again, this formula here. A lot of ands and quotations with the words that we want and then the text function to actually input the dates. Now part two is we actually have to set up this chart a little bit. I already know the way that I'm going to set it up. I'm going to have a box here and I'm going to merge and center that and then a box here, merge and center and then another box, merge and center. I'm just taking two rows and then four at the end for the trend. So in this, I'm going to type score, score, change and trend 
and I'll just give these a better font. I like Lato. I'm going to bold those and then center justify, put them in the middle and I'm gonna make the font quite a bit bigger on these, maybe 14. So those are going to be my titles. Actually the trend we can make a little bit bigger because it has more space, maybe 18. And I'll just put um, some borders around there. So if I select all of these, go to the border tool, I can put a border around there. Then what I want is through here, we're gonna have basically borders that look like this. And then right here, this is going to be all one cell and I'll put one border around that. And then the last piece, oh, sorry, the change is also gonna be merged. And then the last piece is I'm going to put the exercise in here. And it's going to be a drop down menu where we can select our exercise. And we already have a drop down menu that does that. So I'll just copy that, paste it at the top here and I'm going to merge this across and it will maintain the formatting. And then I'll just change the colors around a little bit so that it matches our template. Maybe make the font Lado like our other pieces there, maybe bold. And then I'll put it sort of to the side because some of the um, KPIs are rather big. And maybe I'll make this font just a little bit bigger, maybe 14. So now we should be able to pick any of our actual tests and they will just sit in that box there. Okay, so that works pretty good. Let's put it on bench 1RM. And then finally, what we're gonna do today is I'm going to use the formula to pull out the two dates and the two scores based on what we've selected. So let's start with the first date. So in order to do this, what we're gonna use is a min ifs formula. So what this is gonna look like is equals min ifs, open that up, and then the range that we want to look at, if you've remembered how we're doing this um, all the way through is we use that index sort of match. What I wanna do is, I'll do it in the formula bar. So what we wanna look at is index, and then the data, remember that we have all of our data set up properly, comma, we don't care about the row, comma again, match, open that up. We want to look for the actual date, okay? So what we're going to match for is quotation, date, quotation, and we want to look for that in headers and then comma and we'll close that off, okay? So what this is going to do is we're gonna take the min ifs range of the date column, okay? So now it's gonna ask us for actual criteria. So I'm gonna hit comma. The first criteria that we want to do is if the date is um, greater than or equal to the start date that we've chosen. Okay, so what we can do here is because we're looking for another date, I can actually copy this one more time and paste that in there. So again, nothing's changed out of that formula. But then comma, we need to put, when we're using the ifs formula, any of our, of any of our criteria inside quotations. So I'll type quotation um, greater than or equal to quotation and where we've stored our start date, which is going to be in B4. And I'm going to lock that in because that is not going to change. And then my second criteria is going to be now if we can match the athlete name. Okay, so we'll use that index formula one more time. Index, open that up, data, double commas, match. And this time we want to match for athlete name. And we want to look for that one in headers, comma, and we want to look for that comma when it is equal to the actual athlete name that we've chosen. So in this case, B3, and I'm going to put dollar signs around that because that's not going to change. And then the last thing that we wanna do is we only wanna pull out this date if there is actual data based on the KPI we've selected. So the last one we'll do is match for that. So we'll go index, data, comma, comma, match for the actual KPI now, which is going to be stored in, in this case, right here, which is F21. And we want to look for that in headers. And then comma, close off that bracket, close the whole thing off. And then we want to look for that when it is not equal to nothing. So that looks like this. We go um, quotation and then two triangle brackets open towards each other, quotation, and then I'm going to close off this whole formula and hit enter. And you can see now it's going to pull out a date. So 
when I center this, it's giving us sort of the number code for a date. So I just have to format this as a date. So what I'll do is I'll go to format number and then we'll choose um, date. And you can see now that gives us a date. I'm going to just italicize this because I think it just looks a little bit better. So what date is it actually pulling out? It's pulling out 1-1-2020. Okay, what it's doing is we're going through this min ifs formula and it's looking if the date matches the headers, which it does, and then it's looking for the date that is greater than or equal to the B4, which is the date we've selected. And we want greater than because we're looking for the smallest in the data set or in the date tab. Then we want it only if it matches the athlete name and if it has a value. Okay, so what this will do is if I go to my data and I take away the bench 1RM on this date for Dave, and then bench 1RM right here. If I take that away, it'll give us the next lowest date that actually has a score for that um, data. Okay, now there's one more criteria that we actually wanna take care of with this um, date formula, and that is what happens if we choose bench 1RM and this athlete has no data anywhere for that? What this formula would actually return, and I'll show you what that looks like, is it actually returns just a really wonky date. So I'll make sure that there's no data anywhere for that test. It gives us a date in 1899, okay? But we're gonna use this to our advantage, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna check to see if the date that it returns is less than the one we've chosen, because it should never be if there's data, and if it is, then we'll just return the value no test, but if it's not, then what we'll do is return the whole uh, min ifs data, okay? So what this looks like is I'll go to the front of this formula here and I'll type if, open that up, and our whole if statement is going to be this whole uh, min ifs thing here. And then at the end of this, what I wanna look for is, is the whole thing less than the date that we've chosen in the first place? So is it less than before? And I'll put in some dollar signs around that. And if you remember from an if formula, now what happens is when I type a quotation, it's going to ask me for my value if it's true. So I'm going to use um, control enter just to move down and it just allows me to type on the next part of the formula and it just helps break things up a little bit. So if that is true, what I want to display is quotation no test, quotation. Remember anything we put in quotations is gonna get printed out as text. But if it's not, comma, I'll use control enter one more time to go down one. What I want to return is this whole thing because that means there will be a date. So then I should be able to hit enter and you can see now it just gives us a value of no test, okay? So again, we took that same min ifs formula and just added a little if statement in there to check to see if there is an actual test available to return, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back to the data and I'll just kind of copy this and put it in there just so we have some data. And you can see now it's gonna actually give us that date. The next part of this is we're gonna do the next date. Okay, we can use this same formula one more time. So I'm gonna copy this, hit Control C with a couple of changes. So the next date that we want is the largest date, okay, that has a test available as long as it's less than or equal to the end date that we've chosen. So in this case, instead of min ifs, what we're gonna type is max ifs, because we want the largest date, and we want to look for that largest date. Again, right here, it says less than or equal to. We want it to be greater than or equal to, okay? And we know that the end date is stored in B5, and then at the end here, we want it to be greater than zero as opposed to equal to nothing. And we'll do the same thing down here, B5, and then greater than zero. So what this is gonna do, make sure the last one says max ifs as well. If we go through this formula now, it's gonna say we want the largest value, go all the way through that matches all of these conditions, that is less than or equal to the date that we've chosen. So it will start at 2020-01-15 and start counting down the dates if the criteria don't match to find the next largest one. And we only want it if it matches our athlete name and we only want it if it's greater than zero 
um, or sorry, if the data in that cell is greater than zero, meaning that it's not nothing, and if it's less than our start date, okay, then we want it to, to display no test, otherwise complete that calculation. So when I hit enter, it's gonna give us um, the number code again. If I just control C and then paste the format only, right click, paste format, you can see now it gives us that date. But what happens if we delete the bench 1RM from 115.2020? Let's do that, and show you what happens. So 115.2020 bench 1RM, delete it, it should give us 114.2020, and indeed it does. Okay, so what this is doing, it's just counting down the dates based on um, if there's values in those cells. So then the last piece is now just to match these dates and pull out the scores based on um, whatever these dates are. So easy way to do this, we'll go into this first score bar here and what I'll type is equals filter, open that up and we want to index our data, index data, again match, open that up and we want to actually match for the um, test that we've chosen which is F21, we wanna look for it in headers and close that off and we've done this part so many times now we need to add some conditions for that. So the first condition that we need is if this whole thing matches the actual athlete name. So easy way to do that, we'll do this index thing one more time, index, data, double comma, match, and we want to match for um, quotation athlete name, quotation, look for it in headers, and then close that off. And we want that to be equal to B3, which is our athlete name and I'm going to put that in dollar signs to lock that in. So that's our first condition, and then our second condition is that it matches the actual date. So index, data, comma, comma, match, open that up, um, date, comma, headers, comma, close down the, the, um, the brackets, and then equals the date that we have um, below, which is G22, and I'm gonna not lock that in because I want to be able to copy and paste this formula in other places. And I'm gonna close that whole filter function off and hit enter. And what it's gonna do is pull out the value based on that. I'm gonna make it Lato. I'm gonna bold it and then put it in the middle. So let's go through this formula now. What it's doing is we're pulling out the data that matches the header, in this case, bench one RM. If it matches the athlete name and if it matches the date, and we know we're only pulling out the date um, based on all of the criteria we already had in there. So this formula works fine. The last thing that we need to um, fix is if this says no test, then we want this one to say no test as well. How we can do that is with an if error function. So I'll go to the front of this function, go if error, open that up. And if this gives me any kind of error, then at the end, what I'm gonna do is comma, and then quotation no test quotation and then close that off. So what this is gonna look like is, let's go delete this test or let's go delete all of the tests again. So we'll go to Dave, we'll go to Bench1RM, delete them all and you'll see it'll just say no test as well. Okay, so this will all match. So that should work really well. And then we'll put those values back in there. So the last piece is just matching for this last data piece. And we should, if we've done this right, just be able to, um, well, I'll just have to lock in the F. So if I lock in this F, it won't kind of come over as I copy and paste this, I'll hit enter. I should be able to just copy and paste this in there and it should pull out the data from 114. Let's make sure that that's correct, 114. Okay, and I'll show you why that works. So in this case, for this formula, we are now um, in that, or filtering out the data that matches F21 still if it matches athlete name, which was locked in, so that reference didn't change. The only reference that changed was now we're just looking at 114 2020 instead. So now for this, I should be able to just copy this and paste it a bunch of times, and it should still work all the way down. So if I select any metric, I should get the values between those dates because of the way that we've set up all of our graphs. And indeed that works fine. Okay, and in the next video, what we'll do is work on the percent change and the trend charts. So I hope this video helps you out, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.